Welcome pool fans from all over the world, far and wide, as we high-five it off between Jasmine Ushan and Tina Vogelmann. Ushan representing Austria, Vogelmann representing Germany at this Euro Tour in Veldhoven, the Netherlands. Semi-finals, always exciting matches, always usually high-quality matches between players who have won a few matches in the tournament they're trying to make their way into the final. Tina breaking us off here. Didn't make a ball on the break. We're playing a race to seven for a place in the final. My name is Rico, and I'm going to be talking you through what the players are facing, or what I think they are facing, in a positional way, in an emotional way. And we'd love to hear your thoughts on what you think. And therefore, I will be asking you some questions during perhaps push-out situations or safety situations in what you would do. I'd love to hear your comments in the section below about, well, anything pool-related, really. And uh, We would love to hear where you're watching this from. Where in the world are you? And um, also, if you'd have a suggestion of what you would like to see featured in the Billiard Network vast world-class pool match library then let us know in the comments below. Here we go first chance for Tina. Nice opening one ball now the three to the four requires a bit of cue ball maneuver but we'll probably leave ourselves straight over the left sided angle that's not easy to do with this two ball with the cue ball maneuvering away. Ooh, if she's very straight here, which kind of looks like it. To draw the cue ball all the way back to the pink four, I mean, that's going to be, a, that might be shot of the match if she, she achieves that. Don't think the follow through is possible. Oh, it is possible. Ooh, nice technique. Love it. Nice high tip position. Nice driving our cue through the white ball. No poking, but truly stroking the white ball so that her top spin that she envisioned really came through after she made that three ball. Beautiful. Now she can keep things in check. And hopefully that was her most or her highest quality shot of this rack. Nice angle on the five. I'd like to have a 10 degree angle on the six to stun it over slightly for the brown seven. Top right spin on the cue ball here. And what a nice and smooth start by Tina here. I mean, Jasmine has to be considered favorite. But a lot of very capable shooters on the European circuit, especially if you have a German flag behind your name, there's always an expectation of quality there. You can kind of see that, as I mentioned before, semi-finals players will have had a few wins under their belt, and that's visible here. You can almost feel that this is not a, a first-round match where players kind of have to ease themselves into a tournament, into new table conditions. And But this Tina seems to be very settled. Now he's a good draw. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, I needed a... A good full hit on that eight ball to get as much draw because that she had a bit more angle than she wished. Now to cut this one down the rail, test her, and there will be some hope in Jasmine's head that this will not be as straightforward as possible. Literally, oh, hit the side pocket knuckle, disappointing grab of the chalk by Tina. Rye smile. 
but no fun being had in Tina's head at the moment. That was an excellent chance to make a beautiful opening rack. Instead, Jasmine with a chance and then will also be breaking, right? Right. 1-0 to Miss Ushan. Serious focused face of Jasmine Ushan trying to cut the one ball, make the blue two. Did that. One ball hit both of the knuckles of the side pocket. And I'm not sure if she's got any view in between the brown seven and nine ball. I think she does. Looks like it. But what do you do? Even if you can hit it. There's no obvious wall of balls or any ball to hide behind. Um, push out. She's looking at a push out here, yeah. Alright, so often with push outs, good advice is to create as much distance as possible. And often don't leave the incoming player in an open pot, but more a safety opportunity. You try to extend the game as much as you can beyond the one ball as the push out player. Jasmine the bank and that would give her automatic position on the three so I am think she, she could also play safe half ball left side of the one ball hit and drive the cue ball behind the brown seven one ball to the middle of the table I think she's gonna bank and fire here never mind keeping things tight here doesn't want to give up an easy chance after that miss by Tina in the first rack. Pretty wise, although the bank did look appealing, didn't it? Would you have gone for it? I think I would have, especially with guaranteed position. You know. So here, because Jasmine left the one ball in the middle of the table, she only has about just shy of three balls with chance to hit the one ball and went a little bit wider than that so safety paid off for Jasmine here three to the four key shot and then six to the seven seven to the eight all require a bit of cue ball movement as I look ahead first things first about a 20 30 degree angle on the three ball so she's going to roll her cue ball straight into the angle that she desires and now can only get closer basically. So great cue ball placement on the ball in the hand. Gave her the desired angle all along and all she did was bring her cue ball closer with every revolution. Now would love to bring the cue ball back to where her stroke hand is or her head is right now beyond the six nice because now even though she's on the rail a little bit cue ball will move to the left now she wants minimal angle on the five because any kind of big angle and the cue ball would run into the seven so she might end up <clears throat> elevating and punching the cue ball directly to the left after hitting the four ball yeah bit of elevation so that she can spin it just before the side pocket towards the five Ooh. well great shot all I saw was that she made the four ball in the right side of the pocket meaning that she most likely hit the four ball thinner than she wanted to and that's why I thought position might go awry but Definitely not. Great position here. You'd imagine she plays the six in the side, but needs the angle, and this is not it. 
now wants to play a kind of classic three rail position around the black ball and back to the rail nearest the green six now wants an angle on the seven to make her cue ball maneuverable to the eight ball it's got a tiny angle we'll probably add top right spin to her cue ball and following it out after hitting the brown seven the cue ball will chase the brown seven into the short rail and then the top right spin takes over hitting the long rail and spin back out to the center table good execution jasmine always had a beautiful technique powerful stroke well rehearsed and you know still a fairly young lady but uh, what a veteran of international pool she is already i mean i saw her when she was about eight nine years old at an international tournament in austria crazy really and then she kind of had the exact same game face that she's displaying now serious determined and really competitive all right, more angle on the nine ball. But without a scratching danger on the cue ball, should be able to hit this nicely center ball. And just focus on the cut. For a 2-0 lead, this nine ball. Beauty. Right, so remember Tina had a beautiful chance on the eight ball to make it 1-0 and put the pressure on as things stand Ooh. made a legal break made one ball on the break and two balls passed past the line from where the players are breaking now there's a theoretical 2-9 combo but that really needs to be made Poof. No, I don't think you should well the fact is if you go for it the cue ball will kind of carry him towards the brown seven so you might have a double chance but do we have any safety options alternatives of course you can still push out I don't think she's going for it yeah safety is really not easy unless she guides the cue ball behind the black eight after hitting the blue as I said, two ball cannon towards the brown seven. And so it was. All right. So now requires, I think, another one of those. Well, another one. That, a deep draw stroke, hitting the two ball as straight as you can and bringing the cue ball straight back towards where she is now. Oh, she's going to use follow through again. So is able to hit the two ball half ball. Yeah, that's the danger, isn't it? That the spin kind of spins dead off of that first rail. Smile by Tina. But she won't be happy with this. This was her chance to get back into the match. Referee keeping a close eye. Players under a 30 second shot clock. Is she going to bank this? No. So a classic splitting of the balls. So hitting the ball, half ball. And putting cue ball and object ball on opposite sides of the long rail. It's pretty good. Sometimes you do give up a bank or a counter safety. But the way the balls are placed now. I think the bank might cause a double kiss. Because you have to hit it too full to make it. And then the cue ball won't be able to get out of the way before the three ball hits it again. Time. Or she might be, yeah, if you bank it hard, you can hit it a bit more on the right. Ooh, just too wide. It's 
So that exact same shot at the exact same hit point, but hitting it 30-40% harder would have straightened up the three ball more and it would have gone in. So I think she should have hit it a bit harder. Really. Nice pot by Tina. I'm impressed by her shot making. She's had a few mistakes, but that two ball follow through in the first rack and this three ball here showing really good eye for a pot and good stroking capabilities. Right, so a bit of an angle on this five ball. Position not straightforward. Now she could draw this, but she seems to be a top spin kind of gal. Nice. Now once the cue ball wants follow with top left on the cue ball, and wants the cue ball to pass at least let's say the middle line of the pool table that point and from anything from there on is good and now she does have the correct angle on the eight ball to make it very natural make it cue ball back up table to half the deficit from two zero to two one miss Vogelman with the extension on the cue Game number four coming up. Jasmine to break. Trying to make orange five, bottom left, yellow ball, right side pocket. Cue ball back to the center of the table. And that will do just fine. So if you're faced with these kind of angles, your cue ball strings straight into the rail and of course then straight out. Might want to apply a little bit of left spin to bring the cue ball back to the center of table. Nice one. Now pink four, does that pass the brown seven? I mean, I think it would also go into the bottom right corner, so she could. She could keep an angle on the three ball, or is she going to play the four seven combo? I guess if she has half the pocket or th two thirds of the pocket, since she's able to keep a straight in position now, she might go for that also because position from four to six is pretty automatic yeah I think she's going for the four ball not the seven ball Underrolled the cue ball a little bit because she would have wanted to shoot the six in the side, but all right. So now a twenty thirty degree angle on the eight ball. To make it a maneuverable cue ball towards the nine. And that's a bit too straight. I mean, still workable, but need more quality on your cue ball tip position and more quality on your stroke. So, drawing it straight back, don't scratch in the side. That is too much angle on the nine ball. I mean, this is definitely not where you want to be. Although these players have shot so many nine balls 
since it kind of remains on the spot after the break with the template racks. Kind of personal preference. Some players like to shoot these in one pocket. It sometimes depends if you're left or right handed or which eye your dominance is. Jasmine going for the bottom right to take a 3 1 lead. Nice. And so it is. 3 1. Tina to break. Yeah, Tina hitting the cut break a lot softer. Isn't able to generate a lot of speed. Not that you have to pound him, but you really need to hit him harder to push that corner ball towards the pocket. And with her break. There are two, like two or three balls going to that top right corner pocket, kind of interfering with that corner ball access to the hole. And Jasmine with a tiny angle, which should be workable. She might place short side position on the three ball. So normally if the three ball is that's you know, you have, you have more room on one side of the red three than the other, you'd play position on the in the biggest space. But now I think she'll play position in the short area. So a nice top spin on her cue ball, nice straight as possible pot or as the angle will increase and that is a bit more angle than she wished for solely because the three ball needs a certain type of speed to reach the pocket and if she lets her cue ball roll that would come up at least until the middle of the table so she might apply a bit of top right to make it run in between the four nine yeah, that's what was was her plan. I mean, this will do just fine. It's in the realm of possibilities of good results. Has there ever been or will there ever be a stronger sibling pool family than the Oceans? I mean, are there any? I can't remember now. I might be overlooking some, but you know, yeah, you have some couples that are strong pool playing couples, but a brother and sister that have been almost equally so successful on the world stage. In respectively female and male pool is quite incredible really imagine if their mother and father also are strong pool players That's, uh, not sure if their parents actually play pool or haven't really seen them at any tournaments supporting them really I don't really know much about their parental situation but first it was Jasmine, who was the most successful of the two, making her mark first on the world stage. And then came Albin, and we all know what he's been uh, up to in the last 10 years or so. What a consistency he's shown. Anyway, back to his sister, the featured player here, and taking control of the semi final for a place in the final of the Euro Tour. Nine ball women in Veldhoven, the Netherlands. All going pretty smoothly for Jasmine, or keeping it going pretty smoothly, I have to say. She's creating it all herself. Would have loved to have been a bit closer on the nine, but... With the 3-1 uh, lead she's built up so far, so a lot of balls potted. I uh, would put my money on her to make this one and take a 4-1 lead, race to seven. There we go. So Tina to break, and she better tighten things up. Oh, no, 
Jasmine to break. Yeah, she stole Tina's break there. So look at Jasmine break a lot harder. Oh, the corner ball got kissed. But with more velocity on the cue ball comes more velocity on the object balls. Made a ball, but didn't comply with the three-point rule. Quickly explain the three-point rule to counter players breaking very soft and squeezing balls in and keeping position on the one. Three points have to be collected on the break and that can be done with each ball made and by balls that roll past the line that determines the breaking area. So the top half of the top half of the table balls have to pass to collect points. And Jasmine only made the six past that line and made the eight. So two out of three collected means she gives control of the table up to Tina, who will be more than happy to accept. Straight in. So Screwback naturally would take her straight back to the pink four, red three. Oh, whoa. Ooh, just that one revolution. Wow, and not an easy kick to hit either. Or normally you like to kick it past left past the four is she gonna swerve it but then there's no safety really so disappointing after that good position on the two but what do you do here attacking she could cannon the five ball in so carry him off the three but the five ball needs a very specific hit point to make it but playing safe maybe she can hit it about half ball and hide the cue ball behind the orange five what would you do here viewers let me know yeah she was trying to make the five ball yeah, it was tough. She was almost forced into an attacking shot there. And now has left everything open for Tina. And with a straight in three to start with. Now let's see if she can gain position on the four, keep position on the rest. Bit of a stretch here. So, most or all semi and professional pool players carry extensions these days. I mean, in snooker, it's been uh, like this for decades, but this way players can avoid having to use the rest. Yeah, it's a fair bit of distance on the six, but a maneuverable cue ball, albeit naturally the cue ball will go straight into the short rail, meaning it would also come straight out. So she needs a tip of top left to guide the cue ball to the center line of the table on the left side. And that's kind of in between. No, that will do. Yeah, so she chose to play position for the corner pocket. I think she's able to roll this in and avoid scratching into the side pockets. Oh no. So she might actually, if she can't, then she can. That's what she's going for. All right, could this be the start of a Tina Vogelman comeback? Race to seven. She's looking for her second rack. Nice. All right, and it's her break next. 
Although, remember, she's been breaking fairly softly and not being able to... Oh, there, a bit more power into the balls. But, only the one ball made. And only the seven or both balls are crossing the brake line. So you only have to... The four and seven only have to touch the brake line or be over to count. And so they count as two points plus the one ball made. So that will suffice in complying with the three point braking rule. All right. So she's going to roll this in, except a bit more angle on the three ball. Not much she can do about that. Now you may see the referee flicking his hand up into the sky. He's holding a stopwatch and his hand raising indicates that a new 30 second time period starts within which the players have to execute their next shot. Now this is not what she was playing for. Whew. Right. I think the in-off meaning making the four left will bring her cue ball into the right pocket. I don't think that's on, so should have a natural position if she makes this. Nice one, very good. I mean, I'm impressed by her stroke and potting ability. I'd never really seen Tina play, but uh, I like what I'm seeing. Nice composure as well. And she could take herself right back into this match with her first break and run. Now top right on the top left on the cue ball. Zip, zip. Very good. Focus still etched on the face of Yasmin Ushan. That's been a good match, hasn't it? She guides her cue ball around. And that will do just fine. Use the noise coming from the background. It's just a, a skip being lowered near my house as Tina takes her third rack. So, moving on to game number nine. Oh, disappointment with that scratch. I mean, that was definitely not a cut break. Yasmin Ushan with a 1-5 combination to start. Any other conundrums in this match or in this rack? Doesn't seem like it. Although uh, the three ball needs a particular position from the two. Yeah, quite a bit of cue ball maneuver involved here. That's a good shot. I think she will attempt to stun draw a cue ball in between the red ball and the right side pocket, or top side pocket as you're currently viewing it. And then bounce out a little bit for about a 20 to 40 degree angle. Ooh, that's underdrawn, so 
cue ball doesn't lie, so she may have aimed low, but eventually she hit it pretty much center ball. So kind of was afraid of the stroke because she needed so much precision there. So she's forced to play a safety unless she wants to bank it. Oh, she's looking at the cut solely because the green six, if the three balls not hit accurately, might still make it go in. Cue ball will be torpedoing up and down the table here, so top to bottom, back and forth. She's going for the cut, ladies and gentlemen. Needs speed. And that, unless you don't, unless you snook yourself behind the black. Oh, there are only a few spots in that root of the cue ball where she could have been behind the black. And she got there. So Tina, her hopes must be rising. So is Yasmin going to hit the eight ball, cover it up to the green four so that even... That's a bad shot. Because now Tina's ball in hand and she can just play it into the side. Oh, hello. A bit of disappointment here. For Yasmin, after that 4 1 lead, will it now be 5 4? Yeah, I think there's a shot into the side or into the top corner, yeah. Bit of an angle required. Oh, she's playing safe. Is she? Was she? Hard to say, I think, mm, kind of looked like she was, but it was potable, right, the four ball. Anyway, I think Yasmin is going to hit this, and there are a lot of hit points on this pink four with which you will make it go in. Can come straight at it, can still hit the left rail as well. So, opportunity created by Tina. Oh, that l small spot which hampered Yasmin Ocean and snookered her on the four ball. That's crazy. Oh, she did get the potting angle on the six, didn't she? Yeah, she did. So now. 20 degree angle on the seven ball, which keeps the seven ball a very doable pot, but still gives you a maneuverable cue ball. Don't want it any smaller or larger, so exactly like that. And then bring your cue ball over for position on the black. Straight in, or again, 10 to 20 degree angle on the black will do. Even a larger angle you can accept. If you accept a larger angle, then you don't have to hit the seven ball so hard, which makes the pocket friendlier. Don't hit it so hard, Tina. That was a bit of a thump, really, rather than a stroke. Yikes. Oh, and her coming back to 5-4 or 6-3. I mean, what a difference. So Yasmin Ushan, after this nine ball, one game away from a place in the final. Trying to make the red three bottom left. Check that one out. Oh, that missed. Might not necessarily be her doing the racks on the Euro Tour. They don't use a template. They knock them in with a template prior to the tournament. So they don't have a plastic template laying on the table, which I quite like, but after a lot of play, 
those little indentations that the balls fall into at the beginning of the tournament may fade a little bit and they might not all be touching anymore. Anyway, he has been at the table though. Looking to apply the killer safety, but that's exposing the one the white ball. I mean got the second prize by snookering her behind the nine ball. Can hit this one just by guiding her cue ball in between the four nine. Oh. I mean, she needed a lot of right spin to avoid hitting that two ball, and she managed. So, Yasmin with an open table. get things done here and reach her umpteenth Euro Tour final. I, mean, I don't know how many Euro Tour finals she's played or European Championship finals she has or medals she's had, but it's uh, quite a considerable amount. All right, so. Not ideal on the four because her cue ball kind of rolls towards the brown seven. So I think she's going to string her cue ball south of the brown seven, hit the cushion and cross back over. Hit the left long rail and accept a bit of a longer shot on the orange five. Like so. Now it can be straight in on the six and draw her cue ball back for position on seven. And have a bit of a right sided angle. Let's see what she chooses to do and let's see how she executes. One more rack required for a place in the final, remember. That's nice. That's very good. So a natural position with a tip of right spin will bring her cue ball into the rail and then back to where her cue tip is now, kind of. As long as you don't scratch. Hello, that's a bit close for comfort. But that will just do. It's got a minute angle on the seven ball. Draw it back somewhat like center of the table. So this medium straight nine ball for Jasmine to beat Tina Vogelman and reach the final of the Euro Tour in Veldhoven, the Netherlands. Here we go. Keep the aiming straight. Drive the cue straight through the middle of the white. And that is that. Jasmine Ocean takes victory against Tina Vogelman. Thanks for watching as the players hug it out. And uh, we appreciate your company. Let us know in the comments your thoughts. And... Uh, do join us soon for another match on the Billiard Network.